Hello, beautiful people of the land and the world. This is Sade coming to you live from Covington, Georgia. And I just wanted to talk to my hairstylist today, particularly my introverted hairstylist. I just wanted to talk about social anxiety because social anxiety is something that plagues many of us, sometimes even as an extrovert. So if you're an extrovert with social anxiety, for you. I know there's certain situations that you may like clam up or whatever. You might be an extrovert and when it comes down to like big, big groups or something like that, you clam up. I don't know. But today I just wanted to talk about social anxiety. So it's honestly something that will can hold us back in our career and we need to be social as hairstylists because it is a social career. Whether you are in a salon full of people or you're in a, a one-room salon where you have a salon suite, you still have to deal with people and talk to people as a daily, um, a daily thing. Okay, so what is social anxiety? Social anxiety is an irrational fear of social situations. Anyone from, with any personality can have this phobia, okay? And I just wanted to clear the air on social anxiety. It's not the same as being shy. And it can be looked as a mental health condition. There are uh, factors that may trigger, um, you know, when you get, no. there are situations where you may get triggered and you may tense up, you may clam up, you may not have the right words to say. You may have social anxiety in the form of public speech. You may have social anxiety in the form of big crowds of people. You may have social anxiety in the form of one-on-one -on -one situations. Sometimes we never know why people may act the way that they do, but sometimes people are afraid to say that they have a social phobia. There's a big stigma behind it. People will look at you like you're weird. And going into a profession where you're dealing with lots of people, it is, Kind of an oxymoron but you have a love of people that you really want to help people and you just have to live with people so you got to figure out how to deal with them on a day-to-day -day basis i wanted to talk about how social anxiety has how i was able to cope with it in the hair industry and also how it has affected me in positive and negative ways so with my social anxiety okay let's back, let's rewind i've been a cosmetologist hairstylist since 2010. I've been licensed since 2010. When I first graduated uh, high school, I don't know, cosmetology school, I went into a salon and I was in, well, I went into a salon where I was just very unfamiliar with the people. And I'm just going to be candid and honest with you. I went to high school, elementary school, middle school, daycare with nothing but people of my color, black people. And when I finally got around, I decided to go into the industry in a Caucasian salon specifically because I was just like I need to know all races like I feel very comfortable around my own people but what about the rest of the world so I went to a Caucasian salon because I wanted to learn how to do their hair and also how to interact so one thing I did notice as a black girl and awkward at that was that um, when I was working in Caucasian salon, they just love to talk, they talk. And if they don't talk, it's kind of looked at as if you're weird. And when I went there, I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to talk about. I was just very quiet. I was very much, I felt like an alien, you know, out of place. And I was just trying to like read situations and in, in, in conversations and see like how do they come up with all these conversations now this is i'm thinking for myself but yeah so i spent a lot of time and this is my first career i spent a lot of time just quiet and I just had to figure out how to find my place. Yeah, so I'm one that doesn't really like small talk and I still hate it to this day, but I've learned certain techniques that allowed me to create some sort of a blueprint for myself to get into more engaging conversations with people. And some of it I've had to learn by watching. So I, what I had to do was I had to learn from more of the social hairstylist and see like okay 
what are they talking about when they first meet somebody, you know? Because I was terrible at small talk. I feel like small talk is like taking your fingers on a freaking um, chalkboard and just going like, I freaking hate small talk. But small talk is necessary, right? It's like the, the opening to more. Yeah, so it's what, it's what you got to do. So anyway, I've watched a lot of the extro extrovert hairstylists. I've even watched some of the more of the introverted ones or the more quiet ones and just see like how they um, function. So I did some studying. I studied some of the extroverts. I studied some of the introverts. One thing I did notice though with more of the quieter hairstylists is like their work was immaculate. If they were not talking that much, their work was the most. The work was like perfection. And I feel like that's why some people would just be like, this is my hairstylist, I'm gonna come to her because she is perfect. So yeah, so being in a culture where social situations are just, you know, there's, you're always thrown into a social situation. Every person in your chair, you have to talk to them. This is just this is just me. And I just felt like I wanted to step outside of my comfort zone. And mind you, this was a journey. Because when I first started doing hair, I just sat, I just kind of like wouldn't talk. I wouldn't, you know, I just say, hey, how you doing? And that's it. Wouldn't engage in conversation. It felt awkward. And now, if you look at me now about yeah, like 10 plus years later, I'm very social with my clients. I'm very open. I really love talking to them and I have a great, great, great relationship with my clients. Um, so yeah, I had to do a lot of studying myself. I even bought a book and I'm going to see if I can find that book. I even bought a book on um, how to master small talk or something like that. I'm going to find the, um, I'm going to put right here the title of it but it was like how to master small talk and so i bought books on that i bought books on confidence i bought books on uh, social anxiety things like that i felt like i had a lot to offer on the inside and i have a love for people it's just i don't like people every second of the day you know but i love people so yeah i just did a lot of studying um, with my social anxiety i studied the introverts I studied, you know, so much, but it took me some time. And the little bit of information, um, a little bit of advice that I have for people with social anxiety is be gentle with yourself. Imagine yourself like as if you were your own child, okay? How would you speak to your child, you know? For the most part, we, we like to speak gentle to our child or in a loving manner. And just think of yourself like, okay, let's say you mess up. Let's say you clam up in a situation where you feel like you wish you would have been more social. Just say, you know what? It's okay. Next time, you got this. I believe in you. You're beautiful. You're smart. Sometimes you got to go in the bathroom and say affirmations to yourself before you start your day, you know? Um, I do highly recommend that because that also has helped me a lot. Affirmations such as, I'm a people magnet. Uh, people love me. I love myself and people love me. I'm a people magnet. I'm a social butterfly. After you repeat this to yourself over and over, you start to honestly believe it and you start to actually see the world around you shift. And this is a true, true fact because it's happened to me. But in the beginning, I had to fall on my face several times, several times where it was just like, oh my God, I was supposed to talk and I just didn't talk or they're not going to come back they're going to go to somebody else because they're you know they feel more comfortable with conversation and mind you there are people that really 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 like conversation and there are people that really don't like conversation so with that awareness that you have as someone with social anxiety you can gauge and see whether or not they want to talk or not and if they don't want to talk hey you're just doing what you're com comfortable with doing so yeah so let's see what else we can talk about i just um this is this video is kind of all over the place but i just wanted to kind of get this out there and i know i'll speak about this in other videos and it will be a lot more structured but yeah so in general my experience with social anxiety i've been in situations where there were celebrities and i clammed up like 
I've been in for situations where there's where I was with celebrities and it was a really good, you know, conversation. One of the things I did struggle with a lot is networking, and I still struggle with that to this day. I also struggled with um, passing out business cards, but I had to put myself in a mind frame of, and that is one of the things that will keep me broke is, you know, just not putting myself out there and promoting myself. Yeah, so as far as business cards, it's like, I was in, what's going on in my thoughts, some people are just really good at it. I felt like I wasn't good at it because I, um, the, I would be, the anxiety comes in where it's like, what if I stutter? What if I don't want to say? What if I don't know what to say? What if I get rejected? What if, you know, these are the things that's going in my head, just even promoting myself. So this is one of the issues that I have had, honestly, my whole entire career. But there was a period of time where I just was like, you know what, Shade, you gotta do something. So even if I sat down and I wrote a little one line script and I just remember, to remember that one line or that one, um, you know, just something to say repetitively to each person I passed out business cards with. Yeah, don't want to forget the fear of rejection and stuff. But um, I just would pass it out and I would say my one line. I don't know why on the inside I would just feel so like anxious. I would feel so scared. Like, what if they reject me? But then usually it's always worse than what we make it out to be because. Sometimes there's situations where people are like, I need a hairstylist or I need a makeup artist or whatever it is, whatever form of business it is that you do, I need you. You know, when you find those people, it's the best thing ever. But when you're afraid and you hold yourself back, you end up staying in the same position as before. So it hurts you uh, money-wise. It hurts with you. It hurts your livelihood. And it's hurt mine for a long time. I've even had kids suffer and everything due to my social anxiety as a hairstylist, but there are things that I did to overcome those things. Going back into the business cards, which was one of the biggest struggles, um, I, I was like, you know, I had an idea come to me, I was like, okay, during the slow periods, let me do some DoorDash. And when I DoorDash or Instacart, um, when I DoorDash, I would like leave my business card with the person, probably put it on the bag, or give it, hand it to the person if it's a woman or whatever, or it looks like they may be a clientele, or even someone with sisters that may need their hair done. So, I would do that. Um, what else? It, I, I have more tactics to share and stuff, but this is just like, I guess, an introductory video um, for social anxiety as a hairstylist. But, yeah. Um, I had to be very gentle, like I said, with my my whole entire career. Um, if someone doesn't like a hairstyle, use that as a opportunity to grow. Use that as an opportunity to learn and get better and do better. You just have to do what works best for you. Um, another tip I would say is, um, let's say you're fresh out of beauty school. I just honestly feel like just put yourself in an uncomfortable situation. So instead of being doing hair by yourself, try to be around people. Study the people that you're around. Study the hairstylist. Study the most successful uh, hairstylists. Study the clients. See what they like. See what they don't like uh, to talk about. Um, just really do a lot of studying because that's exactly how I was able to. Um, just look at people's, you know, just, just study them for a while. There was a black girl in a salon that I was working at. It was like one of the um, chain salons. I think it was called Hair Cuttery. And that's where I gained a lot of experience because I had people coming to me back to back. I was a brand new hairstylist. Other times I was an assistant. So it was my first time really dealing with people. And I had to talk to the people that were coming in my chair. And I had to be with them like 15, 20 minutes cutting their hair and everything. So there was this particular hairstylist and she was a black girl. And she just was so confident. And I loved watching her interaction and how she was being herself. And I was like, all right, I'm going to be myself, you know. And I studied her. And then the more she was comfortable with herself, the more I was comfortable with myself. So it just came to a point where it was like, no matter what race you were, I just was like pretty much, you know, pretty much the same 
the whole time and just laughing with my clients, joking. But that fast exposure to a lot of people, for example, like I said, in hair cutting, it allowed me to open up a lot more. Um, and then I started having a lot more repeat customers. Because one thing I didn't mention is when I wasn't talking, um, and I'm not talking about black community, I'm just talking about everybody. Some people um, are okay with me not talking. I honestly grew up getting my hair done when my hairstylist wasn't talking. But if you want to, to hold on to more clientele, they just would, you know, you want them to feel comfortable with who you are, you know, just build that relationship. You don't have to be necessarily giving them all of you, but just a little something to keep that, like, ooh, I know her. I know her character. I like her. But, um, but yeah, I just was exposed. So just jump in if you can and just be exposed and be gentle with yourself. Talk positive to yourself. I know with social anxiety, a lot of negativity can, you know, come in your head about who you are, what you just did. Did you do this right? Did you do that right? Just, I did it right. I am beautiful. I am awesome. I am, just lift yourself up for every negative thought you have, replace it with a positive thought. And another tip is kind of fake it till you make it. Even if you come off a little phony, do it until you feel comfortable with that, that new version of yourself, you know? Um, visualize the type of hairstylist that you want to be. And I guess I'll go more into that aspect of things in future videos, but um, what else? Yeah, just embrace all your uh, imperfections. Embrace the setbacks. Celebrate small wins. Celebrate big wins. Celebrate when you win. Celebrate when you lose. When you lose, it's still an opportunity to get in and win. But never quit. Do not quit because this will shape you into a better person and a more of a fearless person. There's so many um, people that now, based on my experience as a hairstylist, um, um, they are like, oh, you are you have social anxiety? What? They don't think I'm introvert, they don't think I'm shy, and I'm very shy. I'm very introverted, I am very, uh, I have social anxiety, yes. Yeah, but I feel like I've come out a lot more, of, you know, in my shell, and I, I have beautiful relationships to show for. And one of the things I'm very happy about what well, is putting, putting myself out there because it allowed me to evolve a lot quicker. If you want to evolve quick in this industry, just put yourself in uncomfortable situations. Be kind to yourself and allow yourself to evolve. Allow yourself to grow. Um, that's, that's the best bit of advice. Don't allow fear. Let me say it. Do not allow fear to hold you back. Stop your money. Don't allow it to um, miss out on opportunities to meet people that can take you to the next level do your best and have faith that if i don't know if you believe in god but if you do believe whatever you believe in use that thing that force to drive you to um you know just for that thing to be your support and know that that thing will have your back for me that thing is god god will have your back and you just even if you just pray on god pray on the universe dear god uh, allow me to uh, give me the words to speak you know pray before every client Why not? pray for the words to speak pray for your anxiety levels to go down things like that be specific in your prayers and believe it or not It'll come through. And if it doesn't come through at that moment, do it again. It's going to come through in another moment. That's what has helped me. And I guess I'm just going to make more videos about this because I feel like, I just feel like there's such a big stigma with social anxiety. And it's a lot of people that are embarrassed by it and don't want to talk about it. And I just feel like, I just feel like I just really need to share my experience and, you know, create a safe space for people who have social anxiety. 
And if you have social anxiety, write it in the comment section below. Uh, I would like for you to talk about how it has affected you. Um, if you are a beauty um, in the beauty industry, and you know just what what you would like to become more of. What is it that you're afraid of that you would like to become more of and how you would like to see yourself evolve as a hairstylist or a beauty professional? So thank you for joining me as we explored what social anxiety is. Um, I spoke about my experience and the, uh, discussed strategies on what I did to help me cope. And as I said, in future videos, I will be going more and more in depth about it and just remember that on this journey you are not alone have patience with yourself love on yourself um just keep on practicing and just ask for help and support and you can definitely thrive in this career while having social anxiety you truly can and if there are points where you feel like you need to stop take a break do what you have to do to get yourself right. You can totally thrive in this career while managing your social anxiety. So don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell below, and I hope this has helped you in some way.